All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Candid Candid Cleaning Cleaning Conversations. Conversations. All right, so today we are going to be talking about a topic that a lot of people don't really like to do, and that is fire people, okay? How exactly do you go about getting rid of somebody that just isn't living up to the expectations of your company? Like, how do you go about doing that? We're going to be going over some tips today. If you have a pesky employee or maybe you have a contractor that is just not doing what they're supposed to be doing, how do you go about getting rid of their ass? Okay. You got to <laughs> let them go, honey. Let them go. Of course, for things like this, um, it's not fun for either the employee or the employer. Employer, I'm sorry. It's not fun for either one of us, you know, yeah. and we don't want it to be painful either for either sides right. so how do you the question is always how do you go about doing this the correct way without any feelings getting hurt right. and I don't really feel like you know you can't really avoid feelings not being hurt but right. what you can avoid is um not being disrespectful about it okay just because you're an employer don't mean be rude and disrespectful to people you mm-hmm. know um you you got to know how you get, you have to pick your your words wisely mm-hmm. okay when you're doing this um but i do have some tips down here and uh, one of the tips i'm going to start it off with saying set the expectations um in the beginning you know you need to go over everything with that employee or contractor in the beginning Mm -hmm. you got to set the tone and let them know whether it's a a, your family member whether it's friend or it's just a regular employee or a new contractor let them know in the beginning the reasons why i would fire you right okay they they need to understand you know um in the beginning I, i know that we do we set the expectations by giving them in the beginning these are the reasons why you will get fired right and to have a good tip on how to know when to fire somebody guys um they're gonna do a couple of things and here's are just some pointers before we go ahead and get into the rest of the video and you know your contractors employees might have low performance they might not be performing up to their standards of what you require um they may have poor conduct they may be you know snobby you know their attitude is not right there's poor conduct they also may have some legal issues that may be going on that you cannot you know tolerate because they have to call out of work they got to go to court i mean we all understand we're very understandable but at the end of the day the actual client is very more important and we have to make sure that we could you know continue with the demands of the client as well as if they are no show they might be calling out they're calling out too much you know and they're not showing up to you know clean the clients you know establishment and now you're left hanging you got to find somebody else and you got to take time out of your day it's just so much that happens and then they may not be the right fit so of course everybody say they can clean you know, you wouldn't know people can clean, but right. cleaning your house is different than cleaning your actual, you know, commercial contract. Mm-hmm. So they just not may not be the right fit. Right. Right. Um, and then another thing, you know, you may not have enough work. So, you know, you if you don't have enough work, stuff is slow. You're going to have to slim down. You know, you used to have a big team. Then you got to go down to a small team. It just all depends on the situation. But those are some things that, you know, you may have to fire someone for just right. the FYI. That's right. So when you have had the decision to to fire someone, um, the first thing me and Miss Tamika would do is uh, we would uh, we would hold a meeting, and this meeting would be between um, me, my general manager, um, maybe I would probably bring my VA in, some of my VAs that work on the back end side, mm-hmm. um, and we all want to get opinions and get everybody's insight on this because I've noticed that um, in the beginning when I first started a lot of things you might react out of emotion yeah I agree you know you you might you might just be upset like oh, I'm gonna get rid of them you know and you didn't really take a deep dive in the whole situation you didn't really get both ends of the story you just heard what the client had to say right now there were issues where we 
we the the client called us pissed off and we immediately got mad at the worker right right so i had to stop myself from doing that i had to usa and let me listen to both sides of the story so make sure it is crystal clear on why you are getting rid of this person okay you need to get both sides of the story <laughs> because there's been times when the customer was dead wrong right okay and and she might have been complaining to get some money back that's true you know a lot of people do that a lot of yeah a lot of especially them airbnb clients they complain and they might just be trying to get back their money or something like that and and your um it might have been a miscommunication situation where the worker didn't have the correct um, directions mm -hmm. or, or the correct materials. Yeah, you know the correct saying? scope of work. Maybe they, they didn't have the correct sc scope of work. So how are you going to be mad with them? So take your time first and right. really evaluate both sides of the story. Listen to both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, make it crystal clear. I usually hold these back end meetings with all of all of the um, all of my back end people, my VAs, my assistant, and we will sit we'll sit down and um and we'll just evaluate which worker we're talking about here. Right. You know, if this person is always late, always complaining, right. if they're making all of our lives a living hell on the back end because we have to work to bring in more clients and we got a job to do so if this one worker is just sickening as hell mm -hmm. it's always an issue the the there's always a complaint it's it's not just with one client it's with like more than three clients are complaining about this one person right you know it's times like that you sit down you have these meetings with your team and um, you make a decision. Um, my next tip would be to um, make sure that you're keeping good records. Oh, that's for sure. Okay, of every little thing your employee see. It's it's different when you're hired when you're firing an employee than firing a contractor as oh, well. Oh, should definitely go into detail. I, I mean, the difference. the difference I would say for employees, you have to give them a ver verbal warning. It's it's steps. <laughs> it's levels to it. It's levels to this. You give them a verbal warning. Hey, just want to give you a warning that um, you know, it's a must that you show up on time. You know, the unit start at nine o'clock and blah 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 blah. You have them that give them that warning, right? They do it again, and then you let them know if they do it again, you will receive a write up. It's only protocol. It's no, mm -hmm. it ain't no need to get snoozy. Ain't no need to be. I'm just following my company policy, and I really, really appreciate it if you do it as well. Um, and then you'll let them know at that warning, you will get one write up. Mm -hmm. After that, you get another write up. After that, third write up, it is termination. So there's levels to it when you are uh, working with an employee. And in some cases, if you don't go through those levels and you just off and, and just fire them with no uh, explanation, um, in, in some situations, they can go down there and file unemployment on you. Oh, they're going to try. Okay. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you have good records with your employees. Contractors can be a little different. You know, con independent contractors in, a, in our contractor agreement, I don't have to necessarily give you a reason for letting you go. Mm -hmm. You know, I, if you're not showing up, you're not doing what you're supposed to do for our company and our clients. We no longer have to give you any work. Right. And you can't go down there and file no unemployment because you are a contractor, independent sure. contractor for our company. Okay. Um, for subcontracting work out to another company, mm -hmm. um, it may be a situation where you have in your subcontractor's agreement that you have to give them a 30 day notice. You know, mm -hmm. some subcontractor agreements, it says if you want to terminate this contract, you got to give us a written notice. So, Pay attention to your subcontractor's agreement, okay? If you don't want to go through the 30-day notice thing, then write on there a 15-day day notice or something like that. But um, those are different different ways that you can fire and, and fire a contractor. I love it. I love okay? it. So definitely, um, you guys, it's very important to raise concerns and just let people know exactly what's going on. So 
if you keep those records of what they're doing when it comes time to to let them go they can't say well what do you you know what are you letting me go for they're automatically no i mean especially if you're reminding them of what they're doing so i like that what we got next all right so next I would say when it is time to <laughs> go ahead and y'all make the decision and y'all say, yes, okay, this is it. I mm -hmm. agree. Everybody agree. Say aye. Aye. Everybody aye. say aye at the meeting. <laughs> so after that, then um, you have to start by creating the transition plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the transition plan would be, it will go something like this. We know we're going to get rid of this person. This person has turned into a D player. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I told y'all for us, our D players, that means you're on the way out the door. We just trying to figure out how to fizzle you on out. So uh, we would start by hiring someone to take your place. You know, we will hire a body already, have them have them training up while you screwing <laughs> up on the job. Somebody else training up, you know. Um, so already have your backup person when you're when you know you're ready. Um, another thing I would advise you to do is make the fire on at the beginning of the week okay because it, it makes it less painful it gives them the whole week to try to figure out something and find another job you know? okay i would say do that okay. you know or at the end of the day on friday break, the, break the news <laughs> break the news to them so over the weekend baby girl you can figure it out but you know at the end of friday afternoon around that you can break the news to them then but then you have they got the whole week to try to figure something out. right so they're not just left hanging and you know there's no bad tension there you letting them go and they don't have another job even though they did mess up your reputation a little bit you know um so that's very very good i like that i like that and also another thing you guys can do is just practice you know, with, you know, what you're going to say. So do like a rehearsal of what you're going to say to actually let them go. So how already have your speech ready for them? So that way, because, you know, nine times out of 10, when you go ahead and try to tell somebody something, they're going to have that rebuttal. So you're going to you have, you have to rehearse. Okay, this is what they're going to say. So I already know what they're going to say. So this is what I'm going to say. So it's right. very, very good to know that. So when you first sit them down, mm -hmm. you don't want to just get in there and just start you fired because blah blah blah. Don't just start start you know going in. Oh, they gonna you give you the same energy. Some people you know. say get straight to the point, keep it short, simple, blah blah blah. Yeah, I would say to bring them up first, uplift first, and then bring by, them down. by telling them all the things that they did do for your company mm -hmm. that you really appreciate. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I do know in certain situations. That you might be like, well, they did a damn thing good for my company. <laughs> they always showed up late. They can't clean, you know. But figure out something, you know. Mm -hmm. I, if if it's a situation where they, you feel like they absolutely didn't do anything, I can't figure out how to uplift. Yeah. Um, I would start it off with saying that um, I appreciate you for making an attempt to even show up to work today, or um, I'm I appreciate you for for um, applying. You see how this. hard it is for you to even figure out the words you <laughs> I, to I say? appreciate you for applying for this position, <laughs> you know, for working working for our company. I really appreciate it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, as long as you've been with us, you know. Huh, the words are hard for you to say. <laughs> you see? pain in the ass. But <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. So we would just, you know, bring them into the office and just let them know. I definitely want to take the time out and thank you for all your hard work and dedication towards the company. You, are, you. you are always showing up for work. See, um, she does it way better than me, y'all. <laughs> you're always showing up for work. Mm -hmm. I definitely do appreciate that because a lot of people don't show up. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate the fact that you aren't dedicated because, you know, you do show up mm -hmm. and you have seemed to. I don't know how, but you know, you don't come up with those excuses knowing that they do. It gets them to thinking. You don't come up with excuses of why you can't, um, you know, come to work and things of that nature. Right. And then be like, on the bright side, though, I have to tell you. However, we have um, had to have raised concerns because our clients have been providing us with feedback. And with the feedback that we've been given, I would like to let you know that we have decided to move forward with another candidate. 
Why? Because with the rapport of the feedback from our client, we cannot move forward because it has caused a disruption between our relationship. So what we have to do now is we have to figure out an exit plan. How does that sound? Ooh, give it up for Mr. Mika. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about, baby. You did that perfectly, okay? <laughs> she is way better at this than me. And whenever it's time to fire somebody, I just have to give let her do it because I'm so nice. I'm so nice. Oh, and then I'm so rude. <laughs> but she know how to she know how to do it, y'all. She in the professional way because people will get in their feelings. I you are mean. messing with their money, yeah. Okay, but they are messing with with your company's brand, you know. So they're they're messing. Man, listen. Another thing that I'm gonna say is um. Don't say that you understand how they feel because you don't. You don't. Um, don't be, I mean, you're not the one that's screwing up on jobs. And like for me, I've never been fired from a job. I've always quit. Okay. Let's <laughs> so be clear. I don't know how it feels to be fired. So I'm, I would say that. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I would say, listen to what they have to say. Right. I, I agree. I with would that. definitely listen to every word you got to say, baby. But after listening to what they have to say, you have to stay firm on your decision. Yes, okay. Yes. You've got to make sure y'all, you a boss and you came up with this decision. Mm -hmm. Don't let, don't let them get in there snotting and crying. Okay. And, and then boozle you, you, honey. And you get um, empathetic to the whole situation. Because a lot of managers, we tend to be empathetic, empathetic. I don't see. I know I'm, I'm one of them. I, I start feeling sorry that. for you. Oh, Lord, I'm about to fire this girl. She got five kids. She'd be like, Bitch, you got five kids. <laughs> I'd be real quick to say something, but I get it. We'd be trying to hold on to people and give them a chance because a heart shocker. We'd be holding on to them, like, you know, how when your teeth loose, you know, how little kids when they lose teeth and they'd be that one little tooth, they keep bugging you. Hey, is it time to pull my tooth? Hey, is it time to pull my tooth? And that little tooth just be daggling and it be just breaking right there. And you be like, want to pull it, but you don't want to pull it because it ain't ready yet. So we really be trying to hold on to people, but, but you yes, got to let them go. Avoid from um, misdirected um, compassion, you know, being, being uh, all empathetic to them. Try thinking about being empathetic to the people that are actually doing their job. Mm -hmm. How about that? So this is something that I had to work on myself because I tend to feel sorry for a whole lot of people. And I like yeah. to be like, well, you know, it's been situations where I've had to let people go and help them on out the door. Okay, I would I would literally I, I would give them a contract, a little smaller contract that I wasn't you know, I probably was going to let go anyway, you know, and here you go, baby girl. It, it ain't work out with us, but maybe you can, you know, take this right here because I was going to let it go anyway. So, you know, help you out. You know what I'm saying? I know you still got to do your thing, feed your family yeah. and all that right there. Mr. Meek be like, ah, 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 ah. I knew. They didn't care. They was coming to work late. They was doing this, doing that. Why would you help them? You know, but, um, Try being more empathetic to the people that are actually coming to work on time, that mm -hmm. are actually showing up and doing a good job, Right. you know, because those people are actually happy that you're getting rid of the dead weight because they're having to carry the their weight. Oh, their dead weight. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're having to 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 really go in those Airbnbs and do extra work because these people were slacking mm -hmm. and still getting paid. Yeah. OK, so there was even times when. People would do a bad job and they'll still get paid for it. Yeah, just you know to keep I mean? the peace. I mean, I've, I've still paid people, and I'm not telling y'all to do this, but just for me, um, if I tell if I if I don't get paid for a unit and I tell a contractor, I say, hey, you know, we didn't get paid for that unit because you did XYZ in it, so I'm not mm -hmm. gonna be able to pay you. Um, it's been times where the contractor would, you know, rebuttal. And right. they would feel like, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, because you're going to pay me for that because I did da-da-da-da-da-da. Listen, I'm not going to go back and forth with you over no $100. Right. Here go your funky little $100, baby, even though we didn't get paid for that unit because you went in there and screwed it up. Here you go, and we're going to part ways because you're no longer a good fit for our company. Okay, mm -hmm. so it is what it is. <laughs> I would rather keep the peace. I would rather save my uh, save my energy and all that. 
than to argue back, go back and forth over a buck. Yeah, because that's we'll try to bring you up by we, two bags. We're yeah. not about to do that. Right. <laughs> okay, here you go. Bling, cash out. Okay. It, it's it. That's it. It's over. All right. Hallelujah. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. Um, I've learned how to uh hire slow and fire fast. Yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah, as soon that. as you see those, you know, little mishaps inside of your company. You know, it's some situations where we tend to hold on to people just because we need another body. We need that warm booty. We need, I'm, I don't want to say warm booty, but we need that warm body. Right. <laughs> that is not right. It, it, but, that's all right. <laughs> but, you know, it's times where we tend to hold on to people that aren't good. They're not serving us. And we sitting here holding on to them because we feel like we ain't got nobody else. Or you might be holding on to somebody that's actually good, but they got a messed up attitude. Oh, God. And you, and their people ain't good either. Because they damaging other people. I don't care how good you can clean. If right. you're sickening and you feel like you miss clean, clean, and every, the world just revolve around you, you still a bad employee. You still right. a bad worker because you're being sickening. You sick, if, you, if you are a pain in the ass to me or my staff, anybody, right. you know, and you're not a good fit. You're still not. I don't care how good you can play. Okay. So you got to get in the habit of um, hiring slow by taking your time, evaluating these people. Don't just rush and throw people out there because because you got an account and you need to hurry up and find some some bodies. You know, take your time, evaluate these people, make right. sure these people are the perfect fit for you. Okay. Ooh, and after you do that, then. When they start, when you start finding out little things, just take notes. Okay, she's still showing up late. Mm -hmm. Still not cleaning behind the mm -hmm. toilet like you're supposed to. Still not. Just take your once you one strike, two strike, three strike. If they, if you know in your, you know in your heart when people not a good fit, just get rid of them. Just get rid of them. High, slow, fire, fast. <laughs> Another thing, guys. Because um, most terminations don't happen as fast as they should. Right. Okay. Don't play around with it. Okay. Make sure um, y'all bring a witness. Okay. Make sure y'all have that's a, a good one. Witness. That's a good one. I can't stress it enough because you don't. It's it's gonna come to a point where if you got a snazzy one, it might be a he say she say thing. Right. And then people might be in their feelings, and you need to have somebody there. You know, as a mediator, you might need to have somebody to help you. You just never know. But I always say have a witness because you just never know. Can I get a witness? Hey, make sure you got a witness with you. All right. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, I'm going to end it off with saying it's not the people that you fire that make your life miserable. It's the people that you don't. Write that down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's say, not, you might need to say that again. And it's not the people that you fire that make your life miserable. It's the people that you don't fire that Elaborate. make your life miserable. Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> elaborate it's self-explanatory i think you need to you might got some people who might not understand that because i think that flew over a lot of people head. yeah it might have flew over a lot of people head but what that means is if you know someone is not living up to their expectations and you need to get rid of them just go ahead and get rid of them and the people that you are not getting rid of are the headaches right okay that's what that means so get rid of them let right. them go. <laughs> let them go. Let them go. <laughs> let go, go let that. God. Let go, let God. Okay. All right. All right. So that's my time for today, you guys. I hope you guys were able to get a little bit of insight on what we were talking about today. Mm -hmm. All about letting people go. Whether you got employees or contractors, these are all tips that you can use when offboarding someone. Okay. Um, until the next podcast, we are out of here. Please. <laughs> bye, bye, y'all. <laughs> Ciao. Oh, Lord. She don't know how to end the thing, child. I don't. <laughs> Not text that.